Okay, well, thank you all for being here. Um, really appreciate your gathering here today on this announcement. I want to introduce the folks next to me. Um, Justin Colbert is chief of our Environmental and Public Protection Division. Uh, Meredith Chaudoir, <laughs> I was like, where is she? She's right behind me. She's Assistant Attorney General in the Consumer Protection Unit, who's been lead on the case I'm about to announce. And our paralegal, Jacob Metivier, is um, in the Consumer Unit as well, and we're really glad that they're here. Is our summer intern, Brad, here yes, too? Yes, he's right there. Yeah, hey Brad, thanks for being here. Thanks for your, your help. Um, Today I'm announcing that after a four-year multi-state investigation, I along with 14, uh, 14, excuse me, <clears throat> I along with 42 other state attorneys general has re have reached a multi-million dollar national settlement to resolve allegations of violations of the Vermont Consumer Protection Act and those attorneys general of their own attorney, uh, Consumer Protection Act related to the marketing of Johnson & Johnson baby powder and body powder that contains talc, a mineral that very often contains the toxic substance asbestos. Vermont will receive more than $3.1 million over four years as a result of this settlement. The total nationwide settlement is $700 million. In addition to monetary settlement, Johnson & Johnson has agreed to an injunct an injunction banning future manufacturing, marketing, promotion, sale, and distribution of talc-based body and baby powder products. Such future, future products will no longer contain talc. I want to provide you a little background and information. For over 100 years, Johnson & Johnson sold baby and bath powder with talc, often marketed towards women. Mined talc often contains asbestos, a naturally occurring substance that is harmful to human health. Our investigation concluded that Johnson & Johnson misled consumers in, advertise, in advertisements related to the safety and purity of some of its talc powder products. This was in violation of the Vermont Consumer Protection Act. Johnson & Johnson not only marketed its products as safe when it knew they were not, it tried to avoid accountability by creating new entities and filing for bankruptcy twice. I am proud that my office, along with attorneys general across this country, were able to oppose these maneuvers and hold Johnson & Johnson accountable for these violations of the Consumer Protection Act. I will continue to use my authority of my office to hold companies accountable for misleading consumers about the safety of their products. Product safety and consumer uh, protection are two of my main priorities as Attorney General, and I will continue using the authority of my office to protect Vermonters and the marketplace, to make the marketplace fairer and safer for consumers, and to hold accountable those companies that put profits before the health and safety of Vermonters. Today's settlement does not account for any restitutions or payments to consumers or for individual claims Vermonters might have. There is a private class action for such claims, and we will include a link to the official committee on, of talc claimants in our press release, so you'll have that. As I mentioned before, this settlement is a part of a multi-state effort. I want to thank the other state attorneys general who partnered with Vermont to achieve this very excellent result. I would also like to thank the National Association of Attorneys General, which provided us with support and grants to pursue these cases. And thank you again for coming. I'm happy to answer any questions. Where's the money, the 3.1 million worth that got? It'll go to the general fund, and the legislature will get to decide how it's spent. What are the other states that won't fall to? There will be a list at the but end. It's a lot, though. It's a lot. It's 42, and us is 43. So there'll be, we'll put a list of, um, of all the states. Yeah, and it's been over four years that we've been working, Meredith mostly, and Jacob have been working on the case. So it's been a long time in coming. Could you say any more about the extent to which this has been an issue for consumers in Vermont? Sure. Um, so we, the, you know, the data that we have is in the past roughly 20 years, about 20, excuse me, in the past 20 years, roughly 200,000 units of powder products were sold in Vermont. So of course they've been selling for a lot longer than that, but as a data point for you, I think that that really paints the picture. Probably a lot of us are familiar with Johnson & Johnson baby powder. 
um, or Shower to Shower is another product that I, I, I'm aware of. Of course, I grew up working in the grocery store, so I know all the products, but I think that one's pretty mainstream as well. Right now, how widespread would this impact be in terms of getting this product Shelves, well, it's still, they have, since 2017, they have um, included, they've ex, uh, um, discontinued their use of talc in their baby powder, and it now uses cornstarch, which is pretty standard for, for powders, body powders like that these days. Um, they started phasing it out starting in, uh, in the 1990s. So if, I should say, um, Hopefully, the products that you might have in your bathroom today are um, containing cornstarch corn and not talc. But if you have old baby powders or bath powders in your bathroom, definitely throw them away. Yeah. Uh, how did you, or how did, I guess, the settlement, how did the 3.1 million get calculated? Is that, I'm just, you don't need to go too into detail on that, but just we're wondering how Vermont arrived at that being the number of mm -hmm. damages. Usually what happens, and Meredith can, can provide more information, but this might be all you need. Usually what happens is there's a calculation that's worked out among the states. And for example, you know, a state who is um, you know, on a, uh, the executive committee or who initiated the case initially might be getting a little bit more money. That, that happens to us. In fact, the other big case uh, we settled that we had a big number. That was part of the reason for the big number. Um, and, and it also depends on you know, market share, perhaps, or uh, population, so there's a calculation like that to make it fair that's worked out with the attorneys general nationally. Meredith, is there something more specific? You this was both, it was the okay. population and the unit's market share, so they divided it up that way. Yep. And you said Vermont was not the exec, so executive? No, no it, it wasn't, wasn't for this one. We were on the working group. Yeah. Okay. So not one of the like, kind of lead. Right. Okay. Sometimes we are, sometimes we're, we're not. <laughs> we, we like to be in the lead, but we, we only have pretty much all the lawyers in our office are here <laughs> right now, and um, they have lots in other states, so, yeah. Um, I think we probably are pretty broadly aware, because you just speak a little bit just to hear from you about the potential negative health impacts of this, like right. more specifically, yeah. Yeah, well, um, you know, asbestos is a naturally um, a forming substance that is often found in talc. So we're focused on asbestos as the, the health um, uh, risk. And asbestos, exposure to asbestos can cause asbestosis, mesothelioma as a, you know, a cancer, um, and many other types of ailments. But I think those are the two most common. Um, the allegations, and you know, we didn't get into this because we're focused on the consumer protection case. And if you, but if you look into some of the, the um, private lawsuits, you'll see that there's also allegations of uh, ovarian cancer because the powder products were used on the body in various places. I'm not going to go into a lot of the details. I think you can do the math. <laughs> For those uh, class action lawsuits, I know you said this is going to be in the press release. Yeah, there's just a link. Just a link with the state website, or is it a separate? It's a, it's totally separate from us. So we're focused on the the you know the the Consumer Protection Act is about misleading, unfairness, um, things like that in the marketplace, and those those are um, personal injury claims. So they're separate. But we'll have a link to the. I mean, it's it's a pithy. Um, I don't think I actually have it in my notes. But we'll put a, a link or the. You can probably Google it and find it well enough, but we'll put it in the press release, which will go out shortly, so you'll have that if you want to, um, you know, take, have that be a part of your story. So, but yeah, the, I would say the main takeaway is um, the settlement is 3.1 million dollars for the state over four years, and we're really pleased with this outcome. Um, and I am really pleased to be holding Johnson and Johnson accountable for these bad acts. So. Great. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. And thanks again to the amazing team for all their work on this. It's um, been a, a, several years, so it's really um, a really good result for Vermont. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Thank you. And I'm sorry that this room isn't to your liking, Liam. <laughs>